Hello, this is Michelle Pethley from Shelley's Wreaths and More, and I'm going to prepare the Trendy Tree subscription box for November, which is the Ho Ho Santa kit. It comes with this wreath frame, these three ribbons, it's a two and a half inch green stripe, two and a half inch red, and one and a half inch Swiss dot red and white polka dot. It comes as well with a roll of white mesh and a roll of check mesh. And finally, the sign is the Ho Ho Santa sign. Okay, now to get started, I've already put the sign, the Chanel stems on the back of my sign. I used staples, stapled them in, and then I just put a little um, hot glue over the staples just for added security. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the wreath together. And I'm going to start with 10 inch ruffles on the top eight ties. Now the 10 inch ruffle, I'm sorry, 10 inch poof. 10 inch poofs are good for two things. It fills up the inner space as well as it will hold up the sign. It gives some stability to the back of the sign. So let me take this out of the wrapper. Sorry about the noise. Okay, now to make the poofs, I just use like a, this is a 10 inch tail. It's just going to help me. I'm going to drop this on the floor so that it will pull out easily. And we're going to just bunch up the mesh. Just kind of accordion pleat it. Okay. Now I do this for my own sense of security. I'm going to zip tie it the ends right to the frame here. And this will be where we start our poofs. Okay. There we go for the... I'll cut off this tail. All right, now we're ready to start our poofs. Now the way that we measure these poofs, we just kind of gather it up. This is going to be the, I'm just going to mark this as the starting point. All right. Now from this point, I'm going to just kind of gather this up in a tube, tucking the ends underneath. And then with my 10 inch measure, just go grab it at the 10 inch point, And I'm going to put that point into the next tie. All right, and then we just open this up. And there is the poof. All right, I'm gonna just go around the ring doing that same thing, measuring to the 10 inch mark, opening up your tie, just giving it a twist, and then opening up your poof. Now, if you didn't have a 10 inch uh, rail board like I do, you can also just take your mesh, kind of hold the tie over a number. This is the 20 inch mark right here. Okay, just kind of stretch out your mesh to 10 inch mark, which is over here. And that gives you a 10 inch poof. Just tie it in. And open up your poof. So you can see you can do a couple of different ways. You don't have to have all the equipment. Makes it easier, but you don't have to have it all. All right, we'll just go around. There are eight ties on the top rail, and then the, there are 10 on the bottom for a total of 18. We're only gonna put the poofs on the top rail though. Now this kit, um, I'm gonna put a few things additionally in to make this wreath. And if you have similar items at at home in your stash. You can certainly do it the same way I'm doing it, or you can go to trendytree.com and pick up some items. 
I'll show you in a minute what we're going to do. I try to make, teach you a different technique each time that I um, put the subscription boxes together. So this time I'm going to use a ball garland to give it a little extra decoration. And we'll do that in the next couple of stages. Okay, this will be our last poof. And what you're going to need to do after you measure it, you're going to have to open up the one that we started at. Just slip this one back in on top of it and then close it up. And there you have it. We have 10 poofs, I mean, sorry, 10 inch poofs on eight of the ties. Just going to cut this right here. And as I did in the beginning, I'm going to tie this tail down to the inner frame here with a zip tie, just again, to give it a little bit of um, security. Now, I've never had a wreath fall apart, but I never want to start. All right, so let's order for it to work. You've got to do it the right way. There we go. All right, now I've just tied that end tail down to the middle ring. Can you see that? Oops. Oh, let me get it in the camera. I just tied it to the middle ring. I'm going to cut off a little bit of the extra. All right. And now we're ready to cut our mesh. Now, as I said before, we have 18 ties total. And we're putting on two color meshes. So we need nine cuts. Let me just clean this off. And I'll get my mesh up here. All right, and I'll get the other mesh at the same time. We'll cut them both. All right. We're going to line these up together. And then we'll cut them both at the same time. It saves us time. Okay, now I'm going to cut these. Since I've used part of the white roll, I want to make sure that I have enough. So 9 times 25 is 225. Yes, we should have enough. I'm going to cut these at 25 inches. And all you need for that is your roto cutter. There it is. We're just going to measure 25 inches and cut them. That's one. Two. We need nine of these cuts. a little coordination which I seem to be lacking today. Now these kits from Trendy Tree are wonderful. They come with everything you need to make a very nice wreath. That's four. And like I said, if you if you don't have a stash, a lot of crafters know what a stash is. Believe me, I've got a stash. Um, I could shop in my stash forever. I need four more. Uh, but you can visit Trendy Tree's website and you can find lots of things to embellish your wreath with. They have many, many supplies. And they're always well coordinated. And the reason that I've chosen 24 inches, uh, 25 inches is because, uh, first off, I don't like to have a lot of mesh left over. I'd prefer to use the whole roll. But also, uh, when you make the cruffles, which is the method that we're going to use to fill in the wreath, 
we're going to you just definitely need to have enough to cover the the wreath frame you know and this like this white mesh is very kind of it's very see-through so you by having more mesh on your cruffle it'll be denser and you won't be able to see through it let me double check to see a four Okay, I'm going to do one more, and then we're done with cutting the, the mesh. Okay, so you can see we almost used all of the white. We do have a little bit of the, the plaid left, which won't go to waste. I'll find a way to use it in a different wreath. Okay, so now let's put our mesh onto the bottom rung. Okay. Now I do have to cut this piece off right here. Okay. Now we're going to be using the method called the cruffle. And the way you work a cruffle is it's a curl and a ruffle. So I'm going to start with the white. And out all of our tines. All right, let's start with the white. You're just going to curl the end a couple of times and what you're doing is the the cut end of the mesh is now inside the roll. And that will help it from fraying. Won't keep it permanently from fraying but um, it definitely makes it easier. Now I'm just crunching up the middle of the the middle of the mesh I'm taking this end, turning it in, and pushing it together. Now you see that I have two curls and a ruffle in between. That's called a cruffle. Okay, now I like to put my cruffle down. Okay, so I turn it over. All we're doing is opening up this tie. Put the ruffle right in where your fingers were and tie it tight. Give it a twist, a couple of twists, and then just open it up, fan, fanning it out like that. And you have the cruffle. Now, you'll definitely be able to see this better with the plaid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a, this may help, all right? So I just have a clip here. And what I'll sometimes we'll do is, again, we're going to just take and curl the end a couple of times so that the cut edge is inside the curl. Now we can pinch this, all right? And that way, now, you can see a little bit better on how I am going to cruffle this. Okay, so on this end down here, I'm making that curl, a couple of curls in. And now I'm just going to take my fingers and pull the mesh together as I slide it along the table and I come right up to this last edge, pull it in, and now we have our cruffle this way. We have two curls and the ruffle in between. Now I take and turn it upside down or over and I'm going to put it right in the very next tie. And all I'm doing is taking and twisting that tie together and then I just kind of fluff them and butt the two cruffles next to each other. Okay, now we're going to take and do the next couple of, show it to you again. The white is a little hard to see but we're doing the same method. We're taking the end, curling it up a couple of times. Let me put that pinch on it for you so I can turn it over. You can see it better in the camera. And just taking this end, doing the same two curls, and now just walking my fingers up the middle of the mesh until it meets the other end. Okay, grab it, take the clip off, turn it upside down, and put it in the very next tie. We're just alternating between these two meshes. Okay. 
fan them out, and there you go. We'll do this again. We're going to just put a curl on the end. Now curl this end up, a couple of curls. Walk your fingers together all the way down the mesh. And take the clip off, turn it upside down, and put it in. Now, you don't have to turn it upside down if you don't want to. You can put it up the other way. It's totally up to you. Remember, no wreath. There's no right or wrong to wreath making. Okay. Let's do a couple more. And then I'll show you how to put the... Let's move that out of the way. Now I'm just going to cruffle this up. I'm trying to do it without the clip to save myself a little bit of time. I just take this end, curl it in, form that curl on that end, gather it up, and it's the same, same thing. Let's tie it tight and straighten it out a little bit. There we go. Now, we're going to be put, putting ribbons in each one of these, so you won't be able to see the it will further help you not to see the, the rail. So let's try this again. Okay, a couple of curls on this end. Turn it in so that cut edge is in the inside of the curl. Now we're just going to curl this second edge up just a bit and walk it together. Grab that other end, pinch it, turn it over, and put it in. Just a matter of fluffing it. There we go. Okay. We have four more to do. Okay, curling it, walking it, and I get towards the end, you have enough to turn in onto itself, and there you go. You have the curl again. The cruffle is there, the cut sides are in the curls, and then the ruffle will help fill in the spot, give it some volume. Get to the end, just try to stop a little bit short, curl it in, pinch it, and turn it over. And you just push that curl or the cruffle right down to the metal. I mean, you really want to get it in as tightly as you can into these ties. I'm going to turn it and hopefully be able to show you a better angle. Okay. Now, doing the white, do the curl first, ruffle it together, and then come to the other end, turn that in. Okay, and now turn it over. Now, see the, the tie there? Right here, you want to push this down as much as you can into that area, then twist that tie around it, and then just fluff it all up. Okay, and we have one last one on this bottom row, and we're just going to cruffle it again by starting with a curl, ruffle it in between, and end up with a curl and pinch it together. And there again, we're going to try, I'm going to try to show you right here, 
in this area here. You want to just push this down as firmly as you can while you tighten those ties. And then just fluff it up. And we have all the mesh on the bottom row. There we go. As you can see so far. All right. Now this is the next, the next step is something that doesn't come in your kit. But if you can get a hold of one of these, they're available. Um, Trendy Tree has them. Um, you can buy them at Hobby Lobby, um, Michaels. It's called a ball garland. Okay. And sorry for the sound. I should have taken this out ahead of time. Okay. So you can see that it's just a bunch of ornaments tied to a very thick uh, thick rope. Okay, now I can see that one has come off. I'll fix it very, real quick. All you need to do is just put a little glue, hot glue on it, and it'll uh, go right back on. Okay. So, see the hole in there? I just put my glue gun right in there. Fill it up with a little glue. And then just push it right back onto the wire. Okay. Take just a few minutes to set up. But in the meantime, what I'm going to show you is that we're going to put this garland, ball garland, on the third rail. Let's turn this wreath frame over. And you see that the ties are on the first rail and the inner rail. But we have this third, this middle rail here. And we're going to zip tie this ball garland to this middle rail at each one of these intersections. Okay, there's six of them. And then after we're done tying them in with zip ties, <clears throat> we're going to just fluff out the garland. And we can actually wait till we get the top one on. We'll fluff out the garland then. You'll be amazed. It's like instant decoration. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to cut off this end. We don't want this big end here. Okay. All right. Now let me clear the decks because unfortunately sometimes using this ball garland, it will help you clear the decks in a way that you don't want it to clear the decks. Okay. So we're going to take and we're going to tie with a zip tie this thick uh, vein that runs all the way down the garland to the six tie areas that I showed you. Okay, so we're going to start, just kind of have to force it in. Okay. And all I'm doing is just bending this a little bit so it cur goes into the curve. Okay, I'm going to take a zip tie. Go around that crossbar in that third or the middle rail and zip it in. Okay, then we're going to cut that zip tie. We're just going to do that all the way around the wreath. Um, this ball garland is the almost the exact width of the circumference of this wreath frame. So you'll see. Now you have to just put it in very, you have to be very determined and bend it. <laughs> and see, we came to the next crossbar right here. We'll get a zip tie. We're using the crossbars because that gives the stability that you need and it will prevent the balls from the um, garland itself from pulling away from the frame. 
if you just use the other, just the middle rail, it may just pull away. But the crossbars will help you hold on to that. Okay, let's keep turning this. Okay, let's see if we get these balls out of there. The next spot on this, you have to master these garlands, just you're the boss, make it work for you. And all I'm doing is separating out the little sprays of balls so that I can get to the main, the main, um, the thickest part of that garland. Okay, now we came to the next crossbar. And I go on either side of the crossbar. I, I go at 11 o'clock and 5 o'clock. So I'm going across that crossbar. Okay. Let's go down a little further. And I'm also making sure that I'm pulling all the ruffles downward from the first rail that we put on there. Um, we don't want them to be caught underneath the ball garland, okay? If it is, we can adjust it, but if we do it ahead of time, it's not. I've come to the next crossbar. I'm gonna straddle that crossbar and zip tie it in. Now, could you imagine having to put all of these ornaments into a wreath singly? Oh, that certainly wouldn't, wouldn't be my cup of tea. Okay, now we're coming, just bending this around, pulling back the sprays. Now we're coming to the point that we hooked. Can you see that? I'm not sure if I can, how I can. I'm trying to get it so you can see. There's the crossbar there. And we're just going to take the thicker part of this ball garland. It's the main, basically the main stem. A ball garland is made up of all these sprays of balls that are tied to this, the uh, main um, wire, you know, or main stem. So you can actually take apart a ball garland and use it in individual sprays. That's, that's very useful too. Okay. Okay, I'm coming in, home stretch. Okay. All right. This is the last one. And last cro crossbar that we've come to. There we go. Now, it may look like they don't meet up, but we haven't spread them out yet. So you'll see that um, it looks like the ball garland has this big space. Like, where are the balls for this area? But when we get to it, we're going to spread out all these balls. We'll pull some back, we'll pull these up. I'll show you how this all comes together. As soon as we get our next layer in, okay? Now we're gonna start and put the cruffles on the top eight, right here. We'll have a little bit of friction, but it's so much easier to put the ball garland in before you mess around with the top layer. And I'll show you how that all will come together. It's the same process. We're going to take, curl the first end. So the cut end is inside the curl and it will lessen the possibility of fraying. Now we're gonna take and curl this end in, <clears throat> pinch it together, and then turn it upside down and just start with one of these. Now I open up the ties from where I put the poof in and I just push that down 
tight as tight as I can and open up the, the cruffle and you'll see that it kind of looks like it's covering up the balls but we're going to pull those balls out in just a little bit. Let's do the next one. Okay, <clears throat> again, just rolling it so that the cut edge is inside. Gather it up, bring it towards you on the table, and then roll that last side. And there you go. Now, again, I open up this where I put the, the poof in, and I just push this one down to that metal frame again. And as tightly as you can, twist it up, and there you go. And we're just going to butt this up. And we kind of have to remember to pull those poofs up a little bit too. Okay, let's get another one. Okay, I'll show you with the clip. I'm going to roll it a couple of times. Put a clip there. have something hold it down for you while you're going to roll the second edge and then just walk it together with your fingers right down the middle of the mesh and then I just turn it over. Now I'm going to open up my next tie, push this down to the metal and then close that tie up again. Okay, just spread it out, bring it together, pull up your poof a little bit, and move on to the next one. Oops, there's my green one here. Okay, roll it. rolls on this end and then just walk it right up the middle. You gather it up, just turn it upside down, open up the twist tie, push it down in there. Okay, just kind of fluff everything up, pull it Together. Okay, here's the next one. Okay. Just walk your mesh together. You get to the other end, give yourself enough to turn it a couple of times onto itself. There we go. Okay, I just untwist. Now you don't have to untwist. It just will, um, your twist tie will then just have more uh, things building up, okay? By opening it up and compressing everything, it's going to stay, you know, tighter to the frame. That's the advantage of opening up your, your tie. And you know, putting it on top of the, the poof. And then just compress it down. It, it won't, the mesh will stay closer to the frame. Okay. Let's open up this one. it in there and then lift it up okay and we're just working this mesh pulling up our poof from the middle all right okay we have two more And then I'll open up that ball garland, spread out the balls, and you'll be amazed at how much room that ball garland takes up and how easy 
decorating this wreath will be for you because the work is already done. All right, push it down. Pull these all up, pull up the poop that's in the middle there. Okay, and this is our last, last one, last cruffle. Make a curl on the one end, ruffle to the next. Leave yourself enough room to curl this end a couple of times. Pinch it together, turn it upside down, and open the tie. And you don't have to worry about the, the mesh jumping back out at you. Kind of, once you tie it in there, it kind of, I don't know, it becomes obedient. It stays right there for you. So you don't have to worry that it's going to jump out if you open those ties. Um, okay, now I've got everything in. Now let's take and just work these balls on the garland. Okay, just pull some up, pull some down alternating them. You can, they're all wired. Some are shorter than others, but if that's the case, you want this, don't want it so tall, just twist it up. It goes right into that slot. This is the area where we need to just bring some together from the, where we started. Let's see, we just pull them. Some of them go up. Just you just work however you want this to look. Some of these and just go around. I think on a ball garland they have six of these like oops, um, six of these sprays that are uh, tied onto the main stem of the garland. So, let's repair that one. Just bring it around. I like to kind of keep it in the middle, this long stem in the middle, so I just kind of bend it into the, the middle so only the balls are coming out, and you only see the balls. You don't see the, um, the thick part, you know, the, the thicker stem. <laughs> kind of looks kind of haywirey, doesn't it? But when we get everything on there, and we get our sign on, and we get the ribbon and the bow on, it kind of all just blends in. It, it really gives it a nice, very easily decorated. Um, just pull those down, push the stem in, and it's all wired. You can co cover it up with the by pulling on it. And I think we're back to where we began, or pretty close to it. This just takes a little time. Have patience. It'll be worth it, I, I'll tell you. It's definitely worth it. how that it turns out it's all around the perimeter it's not on the top but that's okay because we're going to put ribbons and a wreath and a bow on the top so we don't need anything more on the top okay now I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to show you that um, I've cut all my ribbons already I've cut my ribbons now, the, the kit comes with three ribbons, and I usually pair up a two and a half and a one and a half, but they only had the polka dot as the one and a half. So I paired that up with the red that came in the kit, and then I brought in my own ribbon to kind of accent it, and you'll see that it picks up 
all of the colors, this ribbon picks up all the colors, the, the dark green, the emerald green, the lime green, and the red. And the lime green is this glitter around there. So it's a very, um, it's a good ribbon to use for this. All right. Now I've cut my ribbons at 13 inches and I've dovetailed them. And I saved two to show you how to dovetail. Um, you just fold it in. All right. And then you're going to cut from the fold to the, the, to the point on an angle. And that's your dovetail. Okay. So we just do that on all the ends. Okay. And I saved it for this ribbon as well. Just fold it in half, cut from the fold to the point, to the wired edge. And just fold and cut to the wired edge and you get your dovetail. Okay. It's just a nice finish to the end of the, of the ribbons. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to start with, doesn't matter which one you but pick the two that you've chosen to go together, lay them on top of each other, fold it in half. We're doing that to get the middle of the ribbon. Then we're going to scrunch the middle of the ribbon together just like this to make it a bow tie. All right. And I just bend it downward and I'm going to put it into the tie. I'm going to put it, I'm going to actually put it in the white, in the white tie to give it a little bit of color. Now I'm going to open up this tie. All right. I'm going to stick the middle right where I'm holding the ribbon right into that tie and then close up that tie. Okay, give it a couple good twists because we're done putting anything into it. And now we're just going to uh, push out the dent. Right here, there's a dent from where the ribbon is gathered. Okay, and there, there you go. Now some people will separate their ribbons like this. Okay, I like to just lay mine. I do it different, differently, but on this wreath, I'm going to just keep them together. And I'll tell you why. The, the red ribbon that came with the kit is just a little bit, you'll see, it's a, it's a softer material. So it's not going to stand on its own very well. That's why if I, when I layer this one on top of it and find the middle, okay, by layering the Swiss dot on top of it, it'll give it some stability. And if I, if I separated them, then it would get kind of flimsy and I would, you know, the, it has a tendency of, uh, flopping around. So we're not, we're going to prevent that by putting them together and not separating them once they're in the tie. Okay. I'm just going to push out the dent from below. Okay, on both sides, and there you have it. Okay, so we're going to go continue going around. I'm going to turn off the camera. I'm going to do the bottom part and come back to you. That way I can save you some time from having to just watch me put these in. If you're making the wreath yourself, take the time to do it, and we'll come back when the bottom ring is done. Okay, we're back. And as you can see that I've gotten the ribbon along the whole bottom, alternating between the, the two colors. Okay, now it's time to just do the same process on the top. I'm going to start um, with the green and the checked here. Fold it in half again, only to find the middle so you can scrunch up the middle. All right, now up here, we're going to open up the tie, push that down as firmly as you can, close that tie, and then just bring those tails out by pushing up that dent, that little dent, and there you go. Okay, 
go to the onto the red. Fold it in the middle again. Scrunch it up the middle. And just open up this tie. Push it down with all the mesh right into the middle of that tie. Pull it out. And there you go. Top goes a little bit faster. Also, I should tell you, there are eight ties on the top, but I only put ribbons in six of them. The reason for that is I make a pretty large bow and it seems like a waste of time and material to put ribbons under a bow. You're not going to see the ribbons. So I just save the money and the time by just putting six on, I can just turn this a little bit so it comes outward, on the top, top row. Um, you can put all eight on if you would prefer. You know, some people don't put a bow on, so you certainly would want all eight on there if you're not using a bow. But you'll see when I make the bow, you'll, you'll see what I mean as far as it being. A, it's a rather substantial bow and takes up a lot of real estate. <laughs> and I just don't feel that I want to put ribbons underneath it that really aren't even going to show. Most of the time they just kind of get snaggled up underneath it. And that causes me more of a headache anyway. So I'm just going to keep, just have a few more, one more green and one more red after that. And then it'll be time to make our bow. Okay, just ruffle it up the middle, pinch it. Again, I open up my ties. You'll see the mesh doesn't jump right out. It just stays right where you put it. Push this down into it and twist them closed. Just kind of working this ribbon around the, the balls that are sticking up there. And our, finally our last red ribbon combination here. And then we'll be making the bow. I'll show you the layout that I have in mind. With the sign and then the bow. Okay. There we go. All right, so there's our wreath with the bow. Now you can see right here, there's no ribbon, no ribbon tails. So that's where my bow is gonna go. And I'm gonna put it down at, let's say seven o'clock is my bow. If the wreath was a clock, and then I'm gonna put this up here and then have my bow Let's turn it this way for you. Okay, so this would be you looking at, at the wreath. And have the bow straddling here, like at 7 o'clock. See, these are the two ties that don't have ribbon in them. So I'd put the bow here and then the, re the sign a little bit up like that. Okay? So let's make our bow. Put this all off to the side. Now I use a bow maker. All right. Makes it very easy. I don't have the hand strength to hold as many ribbons that I, that I put in there. Now, I brought all these ribbons with me. to go with the ones that came in the kit. I wasn't sure which ones I was going to use, but 
let me tell my reasoning, the sign has a lot of emerald green in it. Okay, so I wanted to get, this is a four inch, I always use a four inch as my bottom loops and tails. And I wanted to bring in some emerald green. So this will be in the back part of the ribbon. And this, by putting this ribbon up on top, it's bringing that color forward. Then of course, these are the four ribbons that we used in the wreath itself. So what I'll probably do is just stagger them a bit like that. Okay, so that's gonna be my bow. And you can see why I don't put loops or in those last two because I have so much ribbon in my bow. Now we're gonna just start with a four inch. And I usually put my pipe cleaner down between the two poles here so that I build my bow on top of it. And then I will um, zip tie the bow and this will be on the bottom of the bow so that I can tie it into the wreath. All right, so let's start. Now, I start with a four inch ribbon. It gives it some heft. And I just, I just like the look of that. All right, we're gonna start with, uh, now this is eight inches from the middle to here. So we're probably gonna start with an eight inch, maybe a 10 inch, how's that? A 10 inch tail. So I scrunch it right here at my 10 inch mark. I'm gonna twist it and put it in. Okay. And I like to dovetail as I go so I don't forget. All right. Now, the reason you twist is because you want the good side of the ribbon to come over onto that loop. So you, you bring it in, let's put it in, let's measure out a seven inch loop. We're gonna twist in the middle. All right, here's our loop. Now we're gonna do a seven inch loop on this side. And on this one, we're not gonna twist because we, we're we done with making loops. We don't wanna twist because we don't want the the, uh, we don't need the good side to be um, coming up. Let's see, then we'll cut it. And by compressing it in there, we now have our tail up here. We're going to put the tail up at the top, and it's going to be a bit shorter than the tail on the bottom. Hopefully. Okay. So that's kind of the foundation of my bow. Now we'll take, oh, we wanted to take this green one, this emerald green. Kind of like this too, because the edging has that stripe on it. So it seems to go really well with this, the thought of this wreath. This is, um, this is an expensive, I'm not sure if it's ferrous silk. I don't know who made it, but it is a designer ribbon and it's two-sided. So I'm going to just kind of curl the edge instead of dovetailing this one. All right. And all I'm doing is just curling it like that. Okay. Now we're going to start up here. We're going to do the twist. Okay. Because we want the good side of the ribbon to come around. All right. We're going to be just a little bit smaller than the, the loop before it. So this is probably a six and a half inch loop. Okay. And now just compress it down. Okay. And cut it. And here, just to show you, I'm just curling the edge instead of dovetailing it. Just giving it a little dimension, a little curl. Can you see that? All right, so we're done with that ribbon now. Now we're gonna go to the ribbons that we used in the wreath and that came in the kit. Here's the red one. Start on the bottom, let's dovetail it. 
Okay. We're going to twist it in the middle. And we're going to bring the loop here. Now remember, when we're done with this last loop, we're not going to twist. We're just going to compress and then cut it and dovetail it. And bring that to the top. So as you can see, we're making big X's, if you can imagine. We're making an X with each of these ribbons, okay? One loop on top, one tail on, on top, one loop on the bottom, one tail on the bottom. We're just going to go through this whole process with all of the ribbons that we have chosen. And I like to do it from largest to smallest. So my four inch ribbon will be on the bottom. Then any of the two and a half inch ribbons that I'm using. Now we're going to start on the top here. Okay, we're going to twist it. All right, now we're going to make a loop that's slightly smaller, just gradually getting smaller. And not going to twist this one, we're just going to compress it and bring the tail down. So we have our X with the loop and the tail loop and the tail. Okay. And I started to say that I start with my four and a half, um, four inch ribbons, I'm sorry, four inch ribbons, and then move to my two and a half inch ribbons, and then finally my one and a half inch ribbon. Sometimes I'll use an inch ribbon, but not in this design. We've got enough ribbon going on here. Okay. So since we have a, this, let's go with this green. This is the lime green that we used in the tails. We're going to start with our X down here, twist it, twist, and compress. Okay. Now let me dovetail both ends. I didn't dovetail the first one. There we have our X made with this ribbon. Okay. Now the red Swiss dot. We're going to start up the top, making our X with tail. the loop we're twisting it and now we're just compressing it so we have our X okay and on the last ribbon I'll take the time to show you the twist all right this is our last ribbon We're using. All right. We're going to start here. Okay, my right hand, which is this hand, my right hand is going to turn in, my left hand is going to turn out at the same time. Okay, now you make your loop. Now my left hand is going to turn in, and my right hand is going to turn out. Okay, for that twist. Now we're done twisting, we just compress it down, and then we cut off the length of tail that we want. All right, I hope that slower motion uh, on the twisting will help you. All right, and then we just go like this. Now, this big bow needs a large zip tie. I use zip ties because I can really crank down on it and, and keep the bow secure. And it's just a 
a good way for me. Some people use wires or pot, um, pipe cleaners. I just use a zip tie. Now I just lift up the bow, put the zip tie down the middle of that because we're trying to get that zip tie into the trough that's created. Okay, now we're just tightening it up. Before I take it off, I'm just going to tighten it up and bring it to the back. Okay, you can see the trough there where the ribbons are. See that trough right there? This red ribbon's giving me some trouble showing you that. That's where we want the zip tie to, to nestle in there. And then just pull it tight. As tight as you can. Okay, so you can see that. I'll move this out of the way for now so that we can fluff our bow. Okay, now, whoops, let's, let's cut off the zip tie first. And you can see my pipe cleaner to it that I'm going to use to attach it to the wreath is right there inside that zip tie. Okay, so let's just start by fluffing each side. My four inch ribbon is going to stay out to the side. Okay, then my the next one I laid in there was the green one. So we pull the green two different directions, t pull the tail down one way, the loop up that way. Then the next one was the red. So I have the red loop here and the red tail here. So we're going to pull them separate directions. Okay. Now the green. Okay, we're still just pulling them and separating them out. Okay. Now the lime green was our next one. Then our red. And finally, our emerald green. So we're trying to just bring all of the loops into their own little space. Okay. Just take your time and fluff it. These more expensive ribbons have great wires in it, so they kind of poof up a little bit more. And there we go. That's half of the bow. That's Now let's do the other half. Okay. I'm going to keep my 4-inch right in the middle. Then I'm just going to pull the tail down. And of course, the next is the green, the emerald green. There's the lupus over here, and the tail is up here. Now the red is my next one. Okay, next is the green, lime green stripe. Okay. Then we have the lime green check, and then the red, and finally, okay, there we go. Okay, so, and you can see, when you put the wreath the, the bows together, the same colors on top of each other, they actually separate out because uh, one is going to go higher and one's going to go lower. So that's, that's why I typically put the same color in the rotation. Okay, so there's our bow. But I put the same color next to, on top of each other. And you probably think, oh my gosh, it's too much green in one area. But because they separate out and you pull them different directions. So there's our bow, and there's our sign. Okay, now we're going to attach them. Okay, now let's put it on the, the wreath. All right, remember, it's the bow zone there where there's no no ribbon. You can see why I didn't put that ribbon on there. The ribbon tails, because the bowl covers it up completely. 
Let me zoom you out for zoom us out for a little bit. Give me one second. I'm just going to change the camera so that we can close your eyes if you get sick. We just need to get a little further, further away. Okay, so we can see more of the wreath. All right. So I'm going to turn it towards me to get the right placement. Okay, I want my bow here. And I want the sign here. Just have to turn the bow a little bit so that we don't cover up the words. We want it to overlap a little bit but we don't want it to cover them up. Okay, so let's do our sign, fix our sign first. All right, now we have them on four sides. You wanna go down through the mesh. Let's get this ribbon out of the way. And you definitely always wanna get one of the bars from below you need to straddle it with your, your zip ties. Straddle one of the bars, whichever one you can get it around. Okay. And then just pull it tight. Okay. And you just want it to pull till it kind of has a little tension. And then just twist it. Now we have a couple of things going on here that holding it up a bit. Just need to tie it up a little bit tighter. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna do the cross one. Again, fish it through the mesh and Straddle one of the wires down below, one of the, the rings on the wreath frame. You don't want to adhere your sign just to the mesh. You want to, you want to get it to the wreath frame as well. Okay. Now I like to do this corner next. Let's get our ribbons all situated before we tighten it down. I know there's another ribbon tail. Here it is. Ribbon tail's trying to hide on us. Okay, separate the balls a little bit. Okay. This is next ribbon tail and now we're just going to go down between the mesh and between these balls and there we go Finally, our last one is this corner here. Now it looks like you'll, I know maybe some of you are thinking, you're gonna see that. You're going to see those pipe cleaners. You're not because that's where the bow is going to go. So we don't have to worry about that. We're straddling to one of the wreath frame wires. And there we go. Our bow is on. I mean our 
sign is on, now it's ready for the bow. All right. Now, there we go. If we put the bow exactly like that, we'll have the tails coming down. Okay, let's try that. Placement. And again, we're covering up the two twist ties that don't have ribbon in them. The ribbon tails, remember, that's, that's how we chose where the bow is going to go because we're covering up that area. Same principle, we want to go through the mesh and we want to catch the, the wreath frame. have to peek to make sure I have the wreath frame in there. I do. All right, now we can tighten it down. Just twisting them back there. Okay, there we go. Now, just take a little time, get the bow the way you want it. And there we go. Here is the wreath finished wreath. With all of these balls, you can just kind of adjust the balls that are kind of caught up a little bit. Give you some more decoration around the wreath. There you go. Thank you very much for spending the time with me as we made this wreath together.